Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I would like to talk about how to create a text adventure using Python. This is the first episode in a series of videos I am putting together about how to create a text adventure. In this video, we will create a directory structure, create a hello world program to make sure the Python compiler works, set up the main game loop, present the player with choices, accept user's input, quit the program. In the next video in this series, we will create a world zone and write code that will allow our character to move around in that world. I've implemented each zone as a 16 by 16 grid to keep things simple. You're welcome to make your grid larger. In that video, we will also move the character through the world and give them the ability to examine the tile they are on. After such an examination, the character acquires information about what they can see of the other tiles and landmarks around them. In this video, I don't talk much about the narrative arc of the story. That will come later. Keep in mind that what I'm setting out to create is a very simple text adventure, but by the end, you will be able to take this code and create a text adventure of whatever complexity you like. A note about editors. I use PyCharm, the community edition. If you don't have a favorite editor, I recommend it. I've left a link to where you can download it in the description below. Okay, let's begin. I've divided this video into three parts. This is part one. We will first set up the file directory, and second, make sure Python has been installed correctly by running a Hello World program. So let's talk about creating the directory structure. We won't use all of the files and directories we're creating today in this video, or even the next, but I feel we might as well set them up now, right at the beginning. Now, create the directory you're going to keep all your programming files in. I've called mine Tutorial 3. I'm sure you can think of a better title for yours. So, within that top-level directory, create these four files. main.py, myclasses.py, utils.py and constants.py. Now, within the top level directory, create another directory, data. Within the data directory, create two more, master files and saved player data. My main computer is a Mac, so I create these files and directories using terminal. Then I create a new project in Python by opening the top level directory within PyCharm. Second, write and run a hello world program. Here is a screenshot of the Hello World program. By the way, I've placed all the program files I'm using in this video on my GitHub. I've left a link to it in the description below. Okay, so hopefully you've got the Hello World program coded on your computer. Now let's run it. And there, that's what it looks like running on my computer. Okay, so we've finished our part one, and now we're on to part two of three. In part two, we're going to set up a main loop display a welcome message, validate user input, print out that player's input, and quit the program. So first, let's set up the main loop. This is easy. All we need to do here is make sure that the Python program keeps looping until we explicitly request it to stop. As you can see, as long as keep looking is set to true, the program will loop. When the user types quit, keep looping is set to false and the program stops looping. 2b. Display welcome message. I think it is a really nice touch to display a welcoming, well-formatted message when a game begins. We're not worrying about formatting right now, but we will make this look nicer, maybe kind of retro, in a future tutorial. We'll come back to this in a moment. The next thing we want to do is validate user input. In this case, validation is simple. What I've done is put the allowable values in a list in constants.py the allowable values being new, load, and quit. As long as the user input is not in that list, the player is prompted to input a new value. Next, we print out the player's input. We're only doing this here to help with debugging. It's not a big deal. If you want to eliminate this line, it's fine. Finally, we quit the program. This is very simple. If the player inputs quit when prompted for a response, the program will stop looping and end. This is part three, the third and final part. So, 3a. Make it so the initial message is only displayed once. 3b. Implement a code stub for load. 3c. Implement new. Create a new character by prompting the player for a name and class. 
So let's take those one at a time. First, make it so the initial message is only displayed once. As things are now, the initial welcome message repeats each time the program loops. Let's add code that will ensure the welcome message is only displayed once. Here's the code for the first part of the program. This is where we will enable our program to tell which loop is the first loop so that it can display the relevant message. You can see here that the counter I've set up allows the program to tell which loop is the first. If the counter is zero, then set the variable first time to true, otherwise set it to false. If first time is true, then show the welcome message. Otherwise don't, just show the player the menu of choices. Next, implement a code stub for load. There's nothing much to see here. I'm just printing out a message, noting that load was selected and that it hasn't been implemented yet. I could also have put raise not implemented, but then execution would stop and I'd like it to continue. Okay, onward. Implement new. The main thing I'm doing here is writing code that will allow the player to create a character. Right now, this just involves getting the character's name and class. We will spend more time in a later video expanding on the properties and abilities a character can have. In this section, to keep things simple, the character name needs to be only one word. Also, I've kept my choice of class simple. The player can choose to be either a warrior or a mage. And to simplify things further, for now I'm only implementing the class of warrior. The code here is fairly straightforward. The first thing we do is ask for the name of the character as well as their class. After the player has entered a character name, we check to make sure there are no spaces within the name. We also make sure it is between a minimum and maximum length. You can set these to anything you like, but I've set the minimum length to 2 and the maximum length to 20. Next, we prompt the player to enter a class. This is much less complicated. To validate the data, all we need to do is continue to prompt the player to enter a valid class. As you can see, the valid classes are displayed above the prompts. And that's it. I've already written the code for the next tutorial in this series, so I should get that one up in the next few days. Next time we will implement a zone, a world zone, and write the code that will allow a character to walk through the zone as well as examine the tile thereon. In the tutorial after that, we will create another zone, a town zone, populate it with buildings, and create a merchant NPC. Till next time, thanks for watching. If you've gotten something from this video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day.